Dr. Gottlieb had said that it's going, it's things that have accelerated that we wouldn't have done for five years were done in seven months. So is there anything from the pandemic that you think is changing the way industry is looking at digital health future, you know? Well, I think, you know, at the most basic, it's opening up the remote site visit as a really acceptable norm. Um, so, you know, you've got, we talked about all those trials that were, were paused, right? Um, you know, I'm fairly confident a number of them were because they were, they're phase three. So they're able to figure out how to run a televisit and record uh, the, the data that they need to record by the patient remotely, rather than bring them into the hospital for the investigator. So I, I, I think, you know, the Zooms that are, and the other vendors that are penetrating Microsoft and others, uh, the, the office, the meetings, the social, uh, my daughter's going to school online, um, so now you can do your clinical trial and collect data online. That's not going to be for every trial, and it, it suits itself to later phase trials better. But I think that is the new normal. I think you know anybody that designs a trial today, thinking that you've got to come in 100%. So I think hybrid trials definitely, whether we can go 100% digital is still a bit more complicated. So you just mentioned Microsoft, and we know you know other big players coming in have come into the industry tested the waters, they've left, but regardless, given that technology companies are playing a bigger role in the digital health space, are there any particular concerns or things to consider with respect to their regulatory approvals? I think the, the regulatory is pretty clear. So I, I don't think we have, nothing jumps to mind. I mean, companies that I tend to think of are actually the tech innovators um, and I, I even think of a Samsung more than I would think of, you know, an Apple, because they produce medical devices. They know what it means to get a CE mark. Um, they've been pushing the bounds of digital capabilities, you know, with remote ultra, ultrasounds within the ambulance, right? So I think that's where the disruption's coming from. You've got tech companies that are also medical device companies. They're also consumer product companies, and they're, they'll start to look at how do they expand their markets and penetrate into trials. So I think that's really where it happens. But from a regulatory standpoint, no, the, the regulations are there. And I think those, those multinational conglomerates demonstrate that they can run a medical device business, right, independent of a consumer business, and pass the regulatory hurdles in one and not in the other. What I hope is we'll see more medical grade technology enter the consumer market. And therefore, the apps that we use every day to track our run and take our blood pressure, get those CE marks, and then they can move from being, you know, what I use every day to go out and exercise to something that could be used within a trial that I might enroll in. And I think that's where we want to get to.